We started in 1909 as a uh, drugstore um, by my great my great grandfather. Back then, if you look at a picture, what you'll notice is you'll notice cigars, and you'll notice the soda jerk, um, which was you know dispensing the Coca Cola. Um, but they did things a lot different back then. He never filled a prescription written by a physician. Well, my grandfather, he was active in the community. He was uh, uh, actually one of the founding members of the Chamber of Commerce back in somewhere around 1912 or 13. So it was community involvement. That, so growing with the community, our business grew. Over time, um, we evolved and we became really a retail powerhouse of the region. We sold the most of many different products, different stationaries, candies, um, other things. We were the popular destination for Ballasta High School um, in, the, in the 60s and 70s. Um, and uh, man, we, my, my grandfather especially, he was, the, he was like a retail guru, loved it. It was great. Um, my father came along, shut all of that down. <laughs> And um, we got it, we started to focus a lot more um, clinically focused um, and got into respiratory therapy, got into the infusion pharmacy services as those became um, new industries in the home. The transformation that's been going on in healthcare um, for the past probably eight years, seven years, um, has been moving to a value based model. Um, hospitals are, are, are moving there or have been moving there um, probably more aggressively. The physicians are there now. The, the nursing homes, the home health care agencies, everyone, our pharmacies, they're all, they're all moving to this new, this new way of doing things. When you think of value-based, you're really thinking about uh, trying to um, reduce health care costs, improve the patient satisfaction, you know, their experience. But at the end of the day, it's about changing lives. And how do you do that? And it's gonna, in health care, it's about changing lifestyles and changing behaviors. And so we're focusing in more and more on how we do that. You know, how do we engage wellness? Um, how do we engage anybody? It doesn't matter where you are in your, in your, in your life and your health. And no matter what, even if you have Siri on your hip, there's still gonna need to be the need for that human interaction, for that motivation, for that guidance, for that, uh, for that human touch. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna provide that human touch in one way or another, and we're gonna feel needs in this community and the communities that we serve. Um, there's always gonna be need to make improvements, and we're gonna be there making them.